All right. Well, let's get started because we've got a pretty full agenda. So I'll welcome Daisy and um, she doesn't get away with giving uh, without giving a 30 seconds of fame. So when she comes, uh, she, well, I'm going to put her on the spot. So I hope she's a good sport. Uh, so uh, weigh in a little bit. How, how are you doing with the accessing your participants? The list look great. And I just wondered if you're having any 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 stumbling blocks, any issues that uh, you'd like a, uh, some more support on. Uh, share with me and share with everyone what uh, what's cooking out there. So I can start. Um, I okay, was. Oh, it's like echoing. Um, okay, I was in charge of the student. Uh, David and I were in charge of the student um, forum. And so I ended up giving all the seventh and eighth graders a survey to figure out who who would want to be part of this. And I did a little background. I sent the seventh grade team a presentation to kind of show their kids like what this was all about. Um, so I didn't want to miss anybody. I didn't want to just like make a list of kids who I thought would want to do it and then miss people who don't usually take part in these kind of things, but who still want to have their voice shared. So gave all the kids a quick survey and had a lot of yeses. Um, mm -hmm. Probably too many that we can actually handle. So I have to sort of um, weed out which kids, I guess, to say no to it. Maybe I can give everybody the survey and just pick a handful for the forum. Sure. For the thing, at least. Because um, kids are pretty excited about this and they definitely want to take part in our future design. So that was really cool. And I'm glad that I didn't just pick, you know, the 10 kids who always get picked for things, but, you know, gave it to everybody to see who wanted to do it. And I had some surprising people say yes. So it was cool to see that. Wonderful. And, yeah, and David put some kids on there too. So it was really nice to see who he put on there. I think we have a, a good group so far. And, and just know that you can have as many as 20 because you could have 10 for the high school component of that and then 10 different ones for the middle school component. So you, you could have 20 uh, that are actually attending a forum and then everyone else uh, would do the survey. So the survey is unlimited. I can have as many as I want for the survey. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yep. Thanks. All right. I see someone just joined by phone. If you could check in and let us know who you are. Sorry, that was actually me, Lindsay. I was having internet trouble, but I finally was able oh. to get my internet to work. So that's why I hung up. Sorry. I got it. That's all right. I, I knew that Haley uh, was going to lose power and she might try the phone. So I didn't know if she was doing a, a simul broadcast here. Uh, question for you, Lindsay. Are you, are you able to access all the documents in the Google Doc? I am, yeah, in terms of all the forum stuff and the agenda stuff and all that that you've sent, yep. Oh, that's good. Now, do you have a Gmail account? I do, it's just instead of having it attached to a Gmail um, email, it's just attached to the regular email I use, so I don't have one more I have to try and I got it, out. beautiful. Well, that was my concern because I didn't want to lose anyone. Uh, all right, any other, any other thoughts or issues, either good things happening or questions that you might have? Wyndon, I have a quick question. This is David. Yeah. Um, the the middle school one, we have a lot of kids, as Kelsey said. And, you know, if we know some of them can be long winded, are, are you going to moderate the session to try to, you know, yeah. avoid somebody monopolizing the whole time? Absolutely. I'm yeah. going to move it very quickly and try to have short, succinct responses, especially because uh, for and I'll just use David and Kelsey as the example. Um, I'm, I'm needing you as uh, design team members and everyone in your respective forum to capture kind of the essence of what participants are saying. So the shorter, the better, and feel, feel very free to kind of uh, royally condense to a couple of words. The fewer words that capture uh, what people are saying will help us when we're doing the, uh, the analysis of data. And so keep that in mind. And uh, also, I, some of you may not be as facile with Google Docs as others. Just know that all of you could be contributing data in that Google Docs simultaneously, and it's gonna capture what you're saying. So if there are two uh, DT members like Kelsey and David, don't worry about waiting, uh, Kelsey, if David's putting something in, just just roll with them and, and it, it will capture it. Uh, that's the beauty of a Google Doc. Any other thoughts or issues? Doing okay? 
Anyone struggling with not getting 10 people in your, in your first forum? Um, I have oh, okay, a little feedback. Go ahead, Kayla. Uh, I have some people in mine that were added and I have some more, I'm doing the staff one and I have some more that I could add, but I don't really have staff from the other elementary schools. Uh -huh. um, and so I was thinking it would be helpful if we had some staff from um, Brookfield and Braintree added in before I start adding more REF okay. people. So if anybody has any guests. I got the directory for everybody, Kayla. So we'll chat. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, information is power. That's good. All right. Any other, anyone else? Haley, go ahead. Yeah, I think Brookfield only has two. We were talking, Richard and I were checking in. We only really have two staff right now. Um, unless, I didn't know if paras, if they would go under teachers or staff. They would go under staff. Okay. Um, so I think there's one we could ask at Brookfield that has a, a child that... Um, is in the high school that might be interested. Um, but it has been hard to think also about um, staff or teachers that have connections to the high school too, because I feel like that um, could be important. Uh, and also to get them more interested in joining the forum, they probably will want to have some sort of um, attachment to that high school. And so that's been a little bit tricky for me. I did hopefully get the two uh, Brookfield teachers that have had some direct connection um, to sign up, but we'll, we'll see. <laughs> okay. Well, if, if you have to shame them into it, I mean, they're representing the whole town. Uh, go ahead, Lindsay. I was just gonna mention, I had put on there um, Jeremy Rilling, who I had reached out with. So I was just gonna put out coaches, if there were other coaches that might have, I didn't know, I mean, they're considered staff and they sometimes have some pretty good mm -hmm. connections and feedback. Yep. So um, those might just be somebody else to consider as you're thinking of folks. Yeah. Well, you see what's happening right now is the beauty of the design team is that you can kind of cross pollinate and you should, uh, because you come from different experiences, different communities. As you begin to sort, who's gonna get the first 10 invite? Think about diversity of your three communities and of your four, well, you're not doing the tech center per se, but you're doing four schools, your three elementaries and your middle and high school. Think about the, uh, the balance in your, in your team. And for those of you that have 20 or 30 names, uh, for the second set of forums, same thing. Think about those that have balance and uh, as you're having the conversations, just be really clear that we don't want to prevent anyone from uh, communicating their voice. It's just that we can have a limited number in the forum and no maximum number in the surveys. So keep, keep that in mind. Any other thoughts or issues before we go into the next agenda item? Okay. Has Daisy joined us yet? Uh, no, she hasn't, but I just emailed her and I emailed her a link again to the to the okay. meeting and and um, the phone number. So okay. she may just need need a little help. I, and I told her to contact me if she has any questions. So hopefully okay. we can get her linked in. She might not be super familiar, although her kids should be able to help her. Okay. That's, uh, again, power of technology, isn't it? To isn't it ironic that sometimes we have to rely on the younger generation to help uh, help help parents and and grandparents and all uh, become uh, active with this? Well, good for you. Uh, let me go into uh, talk about the evolving list. Uh, any any problems with actually the inviting of uh, participants? Are you doing that more via email? Are you doing it face to face as much as that can be done in a COVID environment? Uh, how, how, what, what are your successes here? I've been Go emailing. Ahead. Go ahead, David. I was just going to say I've been emailing and texting um, a couple of phone calls. Uh, but just to confirm, Winton, once, once we narrow down the 10, 
there'll be a, there'll be some sort of formal invite to the, with a link and everything, right? That somebody yep. else can do. Yeah, I'm hoping that uh, that's Tina Scheindel. And Anne, maybe you can help us with that behind uh, the scenes. Uh, we, we established Barry, uh, the process I'm doing with Barry is just about the same time as, as yours. Their first forum is tomorrow night. They have two of them. And their information uh, technology director did a kind of a blanket uh, process. I, I, I provided the information and then uh, he did the in invites. So we'll, uh, we'll take, take that and I'm just making a note to contact. I think as right. long as we have email addresses um, <laughs> or, you know, if they're, well, I would imagine everybody's going to be able to do email. Um, Linda Lubold from the, from the OSUD office is kind of our administrative assistant person that's helping out. So okay. um, with a combination of her and myself and hopefully no more having to roll IT. Hopefully we got, we've got things under control. Um, okay. So we should be able to help get that, get that out. All right. And Anne, maybe you can share with everyone uh, what we know from Tina about the, uh, the ability now that we have our own, uh, I'll call it domain, uh, where we, uh, the shared directory will go from my shared directory to actually the school shared directory. And I think the invites to meetings will come through that. Am I accurate in that, Ann? No. <laughs> my understanding is they're still working on that shared okay. drive because there is still a few glitches there. Um, but the meeting invites um, should be coming through through me. Although she's Linda's not going to warn the the feedback sessions, the focus groups are not official like needing to be warned meetings. Okay. So um, actually, that was one thing that I wanted to talk to you at the end of this is. And so we better probably do it now is she was wondering if you wanted to do those through a regular Google Meet versus putting it through the OSUD Google Meet system. I think I'd prefer to do it through your school district. Um, okay. My, my internet's a little sketchy. In fact, I had uh, on Friday, this computer died. It went to the hospital. I used my backup over the weekend and it took me a couple of days to get things up and running. So if there was a delay in my communication with you, it's because of that. I got it back today and initially it didn't work. It was the same as it was. And somehow <laughs> in installing a external keyboard and mouse, it had changed my, my laptop mouse pad so that nothing worked. <laughs> and I was a little, uh, little frantic at about four o'clock today and the tech uh, from North Branch and Montpelier called me back and said, I think that's what the problem is. And so we, we troubleshot it and I'm good to go with fingers crossed. So here we are. Okay. So I can set those, I can set those Google meets up then it, sh it should work, work out. Okay. Um, and if I can't figure it out, Linda's got a, got a, she's got an email for all of us. Um, oh, but it would, it would be going out to the whole, oh man, let me, let me just check in with her and Tina just to make sure how we, how we're supposed to do that. Cause it shouldn't be that hard. I think that's what Tina is setting up because she, she captured all our email addresses. Right. Right. So but that's I for think... these meetings, but if we're going to do the feedback oh. with certain individuals, then is it yeah. going to cause, I just want to make sure it's not going to cause some kind of weird glitchy thing. And if we have to, I've got great internet connection, so I could always do it through my personal email. Although I'm supposed to do my board work through my OSUD email. So we'll, yeah. we'll figure it out. I'll talk to Tina and Linda and yeah. we'll figure it out. I, I would encourage uh, Tina's office to handle that because I think it makes sense 
uh, they've got the expertise and uh, this is quite important and we've got enough other stuff to do. Not that they don't, but uh, right. I, I think that would be the, the best way to go. Uh, do any of you need any feedback on your list uh, so far? Do we need to go in and just share those and talk through it? Or are you comfortable? Uh, because we're starting next week on February 3rd, uh, we're starting our first forum and we'll need to have those people invited and sent the, uh, the packet of information. When I say packet, it's, a, it's an attachment. Uh, the packet of information three or four days before uh, the actual forum. And I, as you may have seen, I'm asking forum participants to do some self brainstorming before they come to the forum, uh, just to have uh, some points ready. Because sometimes with a new group that you don't have much of a relationship with, the facilitator asks the question and there, there are 10 blank faces and 10 blank screens and it doesn't go so well. So some advanced planning will help. And also uh, one of the roles that I, that I need you all to play is if it is a little stymied and, and dialogue isn't really starting, be prepared yourself with some feedback uh, to be able to start the conversation and then I'll, I'll take it from there. But I might say to you, and in this case, Ann and your group, I might say, Ann, do you have any thoughts about uh, what to start, stop or continue? And so I, I wanted you to just have the heads up that I didn't want to surprise you with that, but be prepared that you could, um, you could get us moving. So that's a really important role. Two things, one, to kind of be the dialogue starter and, and flow. And the other is to capture the essence of what the participants say. Are there any questions about that before I go to Gus? Yeah, Gus, and then I'll go to David. I didn't realize I had my oh, okay. David, go ahead. So maybe I misunderstood something, but are there are there going to be a handful of questions to prompt some dialogue and conversation? And, and if so, do we have those yet? Yeah, you do. And what I'll do is I'll share that with you they're in the uh, in the google dot let me let me share a couple of files with you right now uh, let's see what's going on here so a just... um, couple of you teachers in the in the uh, in the group i just um did a little professional development with this thing called pear deck and i'm wondering I mean, we want we want we want to hear people, but I'm wondering. I don't know, Winton, if you're familiar with this thing called Pear Deck. Are are some of you teachers aware of it? It's a way of allowing people, like you can do this little thing where they just have a little post-it note and they can kind of type, um, and you can put some questions out. I just, or do we want it all to be oral? Um, when uh, I'd love to do that I'm actually exploring that with jam in the berry process uh, I just I, I want to make sure that we're not too complicated because I don't know how quickly folks will be able to come on so we may end up doing something like that uh, and I'm very open to it uh, I have a backup process though and I'm going to share that with you right now can you see the uh, the document that I'm sharing with you now. Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, so the the title of it is Feedback Forum Operation, and it's I updated it today. It's January 25th. It's version two. This just gives uh, participants a little bit of background as to what we're going to be doing, and then we go into the sub questions, and so. This is what, what you'll hear in the forum. And the first one is, what should the Randolph Union High School stop, start, or continue doing to ensure the students who choose to do so are sufficiently prepared and successfully complete their selected Randolph Technical Center program? And so let me move you to how you'll uh, collect your data. And it's on this form. And this, this, the question is, just the excerpt of it and with these bullets you'll just type in in this google doc 
uh, keep hitting cursor down and it gives you more space. And then when it comes to consensus points, this is where I'll uh, try to capture the essence of uh, what's one thing we could agree on around the preparation and successful completion uh, of a program for tech center students. And then uh, one or both of you can uh, hopefully capture some of that essence. And also don't be surprised if you see me uh, doing something live as well. So there might be two or three of us uh, putting data in. And then we go on to the second question. Uh, and are you all, Anne, can you, everyone see this document as well? Yes, we, we can. Is okay. everybody on board? Well, I can see it on the screen right now, but I don't have access to it on my own. So I, I can see the list that we're putting together for the feedback forms, but I guess I'm not sure where to find this document on my own. Sorry. That's, uh, yeah, I'm assuming that's David speaking. Yes. Uh, David, it should be, I send you out uh, these links that are, that will show the Google Doc where this is located and it will come to you as an email and it will show you at the bottom, the title of the document. You click on that dark blue band, it will take you right into the document itself. So are you not receiving those? No, I'm not either. When, when did you send that? Uh, well, let me look. Here's the share. Oh, maybe I didn't. Holy moly, here it comes now. All right. Uh, I'm just gonna say, here it is. My mistake. My, my other question is just to confirm is, I noticed in a couple of spots here, it says technical center, but just to confirm, we're, we're talking about the middle school and high school and not the technical center, correct? Correct, but this is, the, this is the Randolph Union High School student data collection. So I have different questions uh, for the, I don't wanna say this. No, I have the same questions, but middle school students may have some feedback about this and parents may have some feedback about it and business may have some feedback about it uh, as parents or in their, their role as community. So these are questions, and Anne will be more familiar with this than anyone. These were questions that uh, when the school board did their strategic planning uh, retreat that caused this process to happen, they developed some uh, framing questions around tech center, around senior project, around advanced placement. Um, the fourth one is a new question. What do, you, what do students need who choose not to attend the tech center and enroll in AP courses? Uh, what, do, what do students need to maintain a positive attitude? Uh, what do students need to, uh, to plan for, for either world of work, future training and or education after high school? You see the first forum is really about high school and it's about what students need in advance before they come into high school. The second forum will be predominantly about middle school, but it's going to have impact from elementary, actually pre-K through uh, high, sc high school graduation. So the, the board had asked us to query these questions to be able to uh, collect the data, analyze it, and then help the board uh, through the work of the design team create the three-year strategic plan. In, David, in order for some of the students to get into the tech center, you have to, you have to be, you have to have accomplished certain things, and so we're trying to sort of make sure that students are aware of it. And if students see gaps, you know, like I was denied getting into the tech center my junior year because I didn't have this, that, or the other thing that I needed in order to be successful, or I entered the tech center and then I was asked to leave the tech center. <laughs> so um, we're, we're just trying to get, get at that a little bit. Okay. Well, my apologies for not sharing that. Uh, the three documents I have here now are all shared with everyone. Jeff and... has a question. Jeff Higgins has a question, Whitney. Go ahead, Jeff. 
Yeah, so I I feel like there's some background uh, information that the design team doesn't actually have at this point. So two questions. One, is there a strategic plan draft already that we should have reviewed? And then also, are there sets of questions like that that we haven't seen yet that are, are different for each forum? Yes, those, well, let me ask it, answer it in two ways. There's a current strategic plan that was done in 2017 that ended in 2020, and that's on the school district website. Um, and the questions that I have been developing a frame around to get your feedback on uh, were issues that the school board wanted to probe with the uh, internal and external stakeholders. And so that's the genesis of where the questions came from. Uh, we're gonna get feedback, I'm sure, that goes well beyond those categories, and that's okay. In fact, that's, that's lovely. Uh, but yes, you're right, Jeff. That's that's what's uh, what's happening here. Okay, so we just we just got those questions now. Yes. And there is no draft of the new strategic plan yet. No, nope. no, nope. okay. we're going to be developing that ourselves based on the feedback from either surveys or forums. Good. Uh, I went through that rather quickly. Any questions, thoughts, or issues on uh, what your role will be in the forum, on the questions? Do the questions seem okay? Uh, I guess you haven't had a chance to really see those questions, have you? No. I have a question. <clears throat> okay. Um, just looking at, I'm, I think I'm extending Jeff's question here, but um, Looking at some of those questions on that first one, if say the community members are going to get those same questions, I can see a lot of them being more baffled by what we're asking than having useful feedback, certainly for some of the earlier ones. I mean, I don't know how much insight a community or a business leader has into how we run AP courses, for example, or if they would even feel they could give useful feedback. So are we, are we tailoring other questions to different groups or are they all getting exactly the same nine or 10 questions? I can't remember how many I saw. Yeah, yeah, they're all getting the same questions. And let me go there now. And we have, fortunately, we have another meeting before we go live. Uh, I say we do. I think we do. Let me just double check. So today is the 25th. And yeah, we meet. We meet uh, next Monday, the uh, February 1st, and our first forum is Wednesday, February 3rd. We have two forums that night. So we have a little bit of time between now and when we go live to get the questions, but we're gonna spend some time tonight uh, on this. Let me go through, because you haven't seen it before. This will go out to all participants in advance. Uh, it's Feedback Forum Operation is the title, and it talks about uh, just how the, how the forum will run. Uh, let me spend a little bit of time. This is your current mission statement. Uh, what knowledge, skills, and tools do students need to be prepared for the next stage of their lives, which justify the resources invested by the community? That's a fixed mission statement. Uh, I suppose if we got totally different data, uh, and the, the board would look at that feedback and make a decision, uh, do we change the mission or is that still, um, is the feedback consistent with uh, where we're going, where we have been going? These questions came from um, not only the, the board's strategic planning process, but they also came from what are called ends statements that are in your board policy. So what, what this uh, document will say to forum participants, uh, it says board goal number two features eight stakeholder forums, specifically to target high school culture and academic programs. The second set of forums focus on uh, soliciting feedback around middle school culture, climate, and student transitions between elementary, middle, and high school. 
And so the second set of farms will be um, more kind of wide open than the first. The first is quite targeted on high school. Um, and what, what this document encourages the participants to do in advance, as I said before, is uh, brainstorm responses to the list of sub-questions below. And let's spend a little bit of time. Are you, at, are you able to see these questions uh, on your screens or is it too small? Yes, we can see them. All right, is that better or is that takes it off? Did that make it bigger on your screens? Guess not. All right, so take, take a moment and just read the question. Uh, Winton, that did make it bigger. That was better. Okay. All right. Uh, this is Heidi. Are there going to be questions um, focused on the culture and the climate right now in the middle school and the high school? Yeah. yeah uh, high school, uh, some not as much as the middle school. Do you think we should have some high school culture questions? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. All right. Let's, uh, let's review all the questions first and then we'll go back and do some edits. Sounds good. So let me hold that one, Heidi. And, and welcome this evening. I'm glad you made it safely. When, Ready to move? Yeah. When looking at these questions, are they, do we need to think of overall? Or are we thinking of this year? I just think this year has been so crazy. We might need to put a disclaimer about it's not, we're not just focusing on this year. Unless yes. we're like, we shouldn't be, right? Correct. Yeah. I call it the COVID disclaimer. Yes. Uh, we'll ask them because we're projecting three years ahead. Uh, in the future. And so hopefully we're not going to be dealing with uh, COVID-19 three years from now. And uh, yes, uh, I'm, I'm prepared to talk with them about it. And in fact, I, if it doesn't, let me just make a, uh, a note here. That's just for me, just to make sure that I get it in there. Okay. Looking at the first two questions, those seem okay to you? I do think it's going to be hard, these first two, for middle school students. I mean, maybe we can, I think maybe reordering the questions for middle school because it's going to be a group of 10 7th and 8th graders who don't know much about the tech center, who are uncomfortable anyway, kind of like in a new group. And so I think that we got to start off in the middle school with some lighter questions that they would be able to answer like what do you need from adults in the high school like that might be more of a question to start with for them and then these two questions could maybe be at the end that some kids might know but they i don't think many know you know what they need to do to get into a tech center program and they've probably heard of senior project but they're we have we don't talk about that in middle school so that's going to be kind of a rough way to start out for them i think on that very first forum with two pretty tough questions got it okay and I think I think with them too, it's going to have to be like some kind of start that's like a check in to kind of get to know each other. Because I mean, again, it's going to be at 10 sort of random kids thrown together virtually, you know, so just, and we can talk about that, you know, me, you, and David later, but just thinking about okay. have to be a bit more creative with their form, I think. And okay. where is this document? Uh, it should be, I shared it with you. It should be all in your I Google got, Doc. All I got was the uh, high school questions, not this set of sub questions. All right. Let me make sure that you're on. Is this David Roller? Jeff Higgins. Jeff, oh, sorry. Oh, you're on it. I'll send it to you again. I see the 125 high school student forum data form. Right, that's the attachment you just sent. Yeah. Everyone should have them all now. Okay. So the second question focuses around senior project. 
probably the same thing for middle school as far as feedback. They might not even know what a senior project is. So just to sort of back, uh, go back on Kelsey's point here, this is this is kind of my worry with some of those um, people we're surveying who aren't involved enough in the schools or aren't inside them enough to really know what we're talking about. I just, I'm wondering like, uh, for example, if I were in the community leaders forum and I'm presented with this question, certainly in the first couple, um, I think after the first few questions, I might have a bit of a bad taste in my mouth because I'm going to feel like I'm not going to be able to contribute. So I just think we need to think about for those forums where people haven't been in the school, say in decades, that they're starting off with a question that they can answer and they can contribute with. Okay. And can I just, just I'm gonna, the things I'm to gonna shut up here in a second here. So I wonder if, um, since we just saw these now, uh, if it would be more effective for us to get a chance to read these and then provide feedback on them you know rather than you know watching the clock here and, and you know trying to get this i mean i think we really needed to, to have looked at these prior to meeting about them okay i agree and i'm sorry that i didn't get them to you sooner my only concern about that is our first forum is a week from tomorrow and we're going to meet we're going to be meeting no it's going to be a week from Wednesday, and we're going to have a, a meeting two days before that. Uh, if we don't at least have a framing of, of the concept of those questions, the participants aren't going to have much advanced uh, opportunity to do some brainstorming. So I'm happy but to go wherever wherever the committee wants to go, but I'm also looking at the at the time but, frame. Yeah, but like Richard said, like I ha we have the first community one with the businesses and nonprofits, these are questions we can't really ask them. I mean, none of them really, I don't think they can really answer. Okay. I mean, so there might be have to have a set, a different set of questions. Or maybe Richard and Ann, we can get together or your, everybody's subgroups can get together and, and put together some questions that are towards their audience. Well, let me let me ask you this question. Take a look at take a look at this overarching question. If we were to ask any of the stakeholders that question, uh, would that be easier for them to get a start? I think that would be a good conversation starter, certainly for community members who haven't been inside the schools in a while. I think with that particular group of people, it's more about opening a dialogue because we don't we don't know what they do and don't know about what we do. So we need to kind okay. of bridge that gap, really. Okay. Yeah. And we need to ask, I mean, I think they're, they want to get feedback on the current culture and climate at the middle school and high school. So those are key questions to ask. Well, and how are they, if, they're, if they don't know what's going on in the middle school and high school academically, are we sure they know what's going on with the middle school and high school culture and climate? If they don't know what's going on academically, because they're not in the school to know academically. Not everything is academically. Yeah, I know. In the culture. I think the uh, the one certainly with the community members. I, I don't know how everyone else feels about this, but to me, it seems that that one's more useful just to learn how the general public perceives what it is that we do and how we can make a better connection there and and reassure them that their taxes aren't being wasted. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I wonder. It, I wonder. Is there any way to? provide some information on what the current scenario. So again, you're saying like, what should we do, stop, say, is there a way to provide some information about what is currently done to prepare children for the TCC or for the senior project that maybe later in the discussion you could bring up? These are some of the things that are currently provided. You know, what do people think? What's your feedback on that versus kind of assuming, like you say, that somebody, maybe an elementary parent might know what senior project is, but isn't going to know what's currently done for them. Okay. Sounds good. Winton, when we did this before, we, we were, we were looking at and we were asking the community about sort of what they they wanted 
the schools to provide. And they, and they gave us a fairly kind of generic, um, you know, found the rest of our mission statement, you know, those foundational skills in this, this, and this. And I wonder Hi. if we want to re, I mean, maybe we revisit that a little bit for the academic part. So when we talk about foundational skills, what, what are you expecting or what do you want? What do you think are the good foundational skills that students should be coming out with? Maybe, I, I don't know. I'm just- Oh, that's a good idea. We have that in the rest of our, because our mission statement is this first overarching question at, or statement, and then it's specifically to foundational skills, but we haven't revisited what, it, what exactly do you mean by foundational skills and social studies? What does that mean to you as a student? What does that mean to you as a parent? What does that mean to you as a community member? What would that look like? Okay. Okay, got it. All right. And there are some other ones in there, like adaptability, um, right? A use of technology. Um, you might want to include, and I believe when we talked about, you know, climate. If you look at life skills, some of the discussion that we had whenever we did that 15 years ago was, you know, life skills wasn't just, you know, doing the laundry and going shopping. It was about emotional intelligence. It was about cultural awareness. It was about conflict mediation. Those types of things were some of the things that came up in those uh, community forums but we didn't, they weren't really, we, it got lumped into life skills. So I just wonder if we want to just sort of touch base again and see if, if the community or students want to be more specific. Okay. All right. Let's uh, just scan the other questions and see if there's some to preserve, because I'm going to have to jettison uh, a bunch of the questions that are here that the board uh, was interested in and do some adaptation. But in a one hour session, we're not going to be able to spend time on many more than like seven or eight questions. Uh, this one, let's go here. I think you could probably group like five through almost eight or nine together because they're kind of all asking a similar question just around different parts of the school whether it's advanced placement senior project it's sort of what are you doing to prepare for that higher level of academics so i wonder if those could be grouped together okay is there some mutual agreement about that i agree i think that means people could participate and say well i'm referring here to the tech center or i'm referring to advanced placement and that gives them a choice of how they participate Got it. Okay. What do you think about students at the high school having a positive attitude? That stay or that go? So I'll give a little background to that one. One of the things that came up in the board meeting was just um, what some board members were concerned about is uh, sort of some of the the talk among students is Randolph High School sucks. We, you know, this was in a great place. Um, uh, and so it was sort of looking at is that is that real? Is that just a small portion of the population? Um, is that a concern that the rest of the community has? If kids feel like our high school isn't any good and you know, all these other places are better. Um, you know, it's not doing what it should be doing for us. Um, we wanted okay. to kind of get at that. 
Got it. Uh, that's questions. A question I think. Go ahead. I think the, the middle level kids that would be a question that's appropriate for them for sure because that's something that they can they can reach to and and like Anne was saying like they you know they can think about sort of their own notions of how they feel about being a student in the middle school. So I think that one should definitely stay for our forum. Okay. I think we need to reassure them that if they actually do feel that way, it's safe to say so. Uh huh. Uh, there, there are questions that, uh, as we get to this, that will focus on that issue, and it's this one. Uh, ensure there are multiple avenues for student voice in the high school community. And the same for staff voice in the high school community. So Richard, does that, does that address what you just said? Yeah, I was more thinking in terms of these, uh, these students who might be quite intimidated by the whole process, just feeling safe to say, um, well, actually, I don't have a very good perception of my school rather than being surrounded you know, by important looking adults and going, I'm not gonna say what I think because I feel like I might get in trouble. So I'm, I'm more talking about the process of the forum itself than the questions. Okay. Yeah. And then and, and I really want to be welcoming to middle school students willing to participate. But at the same time, if you ask any middle school student or high school student, they're all going to say their school sucks. I mean, it's, that, it's not that our, it's not that Randolph sucks any more than the next school in that town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's funny, though. They say that, but if somebody trashes their school, they're ready to put up their fist and say, bring it on. Um, so that's it's an interesting phenomenon. Uh, I want to just probe this one that uh, students maintain a strong connection with at least one adult in the school community. There's some na national uh, research around that uh, that's quite important that that happen. I think that's a great one to keep. Okay. But before, I appreciate that one because that came up in our trauma training um, about how important that is. Yes. So did the school do did the school do trauma training? We are trauma informed schools now. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, I did that with my schools a few years ago, and that's very powerful uh, process. Good for you. Let me before we uh, do any more editing on the high school side of these questions. Let me take you to the middle school. This is forum series two, and it talks about positive culture and climate. And I, I will define those for folks in advance so they know the difference. Um, the second one is, uh, do they like the operating uh, system for middle school now? Or if not, uh, should we research and consider other types of middle school? Uh, configuration. And that's probably more about grade level, but it will be whatever people think it is. And then what's the right leadership model for the middle school? How do we ensure that students feel physically, emotionally, and intellectually safe? And this one is about the smooth transitions from elementary to middle. Can you go this, back? Can you go back to number three? Yeah. Uh, no, number two. Number two. I have to say, as a sixth grade teacher for like almost twelve years, it's always a mystery as to how the middle school is operating, and they do switch it up, which is perfectly fine. But as someone who has to deal with it on a regular basis, the transitioning of our sixth graders to seventh grade. I usually just defer to the seventh grade teachers at the meeting and say, please explain how you're doing it now. So if I don't have a good idea as to, you know, as to how it's functioning, I doubt anyone else in the forum would. So I just want to put that out there so that whoever's running the forum or running that question um, might want to say, based on your knowledge of how the middle school is operating or something, because it, it's always a little bit of a mystery. I think they're always improving upon it, which is fine, but I would never say I'm an expert and I do at least 15 transitions just for students every year. Well, then you're gonna love the last series of questions and I'll 
I'll surprise you with them when we get there. Um, in, physically, in terms emotional of the language, Winton, for for the middle school students and even the high school, can can are you going to wordsmith these a little bit so some of the oh, jargon yeah. is explained yes. and maybe some examples given? Okay. Uh, yes. Yep. So this, these are the transition questions. And so number seven, uh, what systems need to be in place so parents feel comfortable with student transitions from elementary to middle and middle to high school? So I think that the, uh, the feedback that was just shared a moment ago, um, that may begin to get at uh, the issue. And I forget who it was whoever the middle school teacher is. Or the elementary teacher, I guess. That was Jeff. Okay. So these are the questions. These are seven current questions for the second forum series. Uh, my question to you is, do you like it better that the question, and some of them just, it's not appropriate, but do you like it better that you know, what should the school stop, start, or continue doing so that uh, it's very clearly some things need to end, some new things need to start, or we like some things that are going on now, or would you rather have it just be open-ended uh, like this one? Should the middle school continue operating as it does now? And if not, what should we research and consider? Talk to me a little bit about your feelings on the different styles of questions. I think the start or the stop start continue. Um, again, the only challenge with that is it sort of indicates you should have knowledge. And so I think that there are people that might, if they go, oh, well, I, I, I don't know what they're doing. So I don't know if they should stop or start. So I kind of like the open ended more, especially for like the community and parent ones where people may not know as much um, and therefore they don't feel like they're supposed to. Okay. Right, but I think for the middle school students and high school students, I do think stop, start, continue gives them something to work with. I think if it's too, I think, I think Lindsay's right that for the community open-ended, but I think middle school, like they need to be like thinking about, okay, what do I want to stop at my school? What do I want to continue? I also like not to blow the whole thing up, but just looking at the questions, obviously for David and I, these questions are so much more relevant to our forum. So I feel like if I imagine having 10 group, 10 students, like starting with this one and then going to the high school one would be much more successful, I think, for us. Because the high school one is just a tough one for us to start our first forum with, you know, but if we started here, then by the second forum. So I don't know if, if we can switch, just David and I, like switch our order to have this one go first. Well, I, I can easily start, uh, I can easily move the, uh, the first forum series to be the middle school questions in that one and then move the high school questions to the second forum series if you think that's a better way to go. I do, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like that. The middle schools ones seem a lot more um, like open-ended and, and easier to get discussion going. So then if they, I even think about like how much more talkative we are in this group versus the first yeah. time around so i just feel like um those ones are more open and it might be better to start with for everybody okay well consider it done then. More... go ahead does anyone have a clear concise answer for a community member if they say well how does the middle school work now that's where <laughs> that's where i would need to rely on uh Design well, team members, but not here. So yeah. hopefully she knows. <laughs> I just wouldn't want us to have to make that arms drop on the fly. I think I think that should be prepared just so we can give a nice quick summary of the the things they need to know, rather than sort of scrambling for information during the forum. And and well, I can attend that one. Like I've only been there for a year, but this is my first year. But I could attend the community one. I don't know that I want to run that one, but I could be there to chime in for, for the middle school portion portion of the first the, the first forum okay. I, I agree with richard uh, like if i go to both the staff and the teacher forums which i was planning to because i'm running one of them um i would love to have a little quick summary of how the middle school's running 
Well, okay. and the people that I put in the community and the businesses all have kids in the middle school and high school. Okay. All of them that I put in, I think almost eight or nine of them all have students. So they should be fairly. What's going on? Well, it wouldn't be a bad idea to, to ha have that in our back pocket, so to say, in case something happens that people don't really know. And I don't really know. So it might make sense to have someone in those forums that, that does. Again, I can't see your screens right now because I'm in full page. So I'm only going from voices. Uh, but someone spoke up and said, was it Ann, that you might, uh, I don't know, Ann, you're already attending the, uh, the business leader nonprofit. What, uh, what other forums do you think this issue might come up, might come up with parents maybe? Yes, and so this is Jeff. How about instead of having someone at the forum to do that two or three sentence definition, that we as a group uh, come up with the three sentence definition of how the middle school runs? It sounds very administratively. So does it mean seventh and eighth grade, or it could be seventh, eighth, and ninth grade, or you're talking about block scheduling, or you're talking, you know, so what? What do we mean by how it is run? Okay. Well, are there members of the middle school staff and high school staff uh, on this committee that would be willing to put together the three sentence, uh, not a disclaimer, but the three, three sentence uh, explanation? Well, it's just Lisa and I, this is Kelsey, who are I mean, I'm not high school, but I'm middle school, and so I, I'm the only teacher from the whole RUHS that's here. So, I mean, Lisa and I can work on that together. Um, I work closely with her, so we can work on that together outside of this group. Okay. Is that for middle school or high school? I'm middle school. She, she's seven, eight, nine, so there's nobody here who's really tied to the high school. Lisa's okay. the closest one. Well, Lane's not with us tonight, but maybe we can uh, have him help with that as well. And I'll uh, I'll read I'll I'll put that in the notes. And can that information go to all forum people in case it comes up? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Got it. Okay. You're all worth your weight in gold. This is this is a great feedback. Uh, anything else in the questions? When Did if you... we have if we have feedback for the questions after this meeting tonight, we yeah. kind of yeah. think of something and we say, "Hey, what if we worded it this way or whatever?" Yep. Is there a way that we can put yes. that on the document or should we not share are you going to wordsmith these what sort of what's the process going to be well what you can do i have i have given you all edit uh capability and if i let me just look here i don't know if you can see this can you see that screen yes all right so you can be a commenter, and maybe that's what I should do is give you all commenter. Well, no, I have to give you editor uh, rights so that when you're in the forum, you're able to uh, do simultaneous edits. So I guess I'm going to give everyone edit, editing uh, authority, and I think you also can just post a comment. Uh, but I'm comfortable if that, Winton, you can comment even if you're an editor. Okay, good. All right, so uh, I'll keep your editor uh, authorizations in. Just comment on the side. It will be a little side window, and I'll take a look at that and um, make that change if it seems prudent. And if people uh, don't like that, then you need to comment saying it should be, uh, rather than A, it should be B. And I'll, I'll, it's, a, it's a tougher way to get at it, but I think that with some patience and collaboration, we can refine our list of questions. And I'm very comfortable having you all do that. 
I do wonder about, I think it was um, Heidi that mentioned like structuring them more for each forum. Would it, would it make sense to like copy and paste them so that maybe, weren't we talking about how, you know, it might be appropriate for parents, but not for the middle school students? Would it make sense to create some new questions for depending on who the forum is for? Uh, yes, and I, I do have uh, some language already done. Uh, looks like I need to do more of that. Uh, my only my only concern, and I just want to share with you what uh, the pros and cons are when it comes to the uh, the Google Form survey. Uh, I can, I can put in some open-ended responses, but in order to have some consensus data or some prioritization, and it actually shows in graphs what, what some, uh, some consensus thoughts are, uh, you need to have similar questions. And so that's, that's my only dilemma. And I think I can do an amalgamation of you know, some drop-down menus with some prescribed responses and people choose a response. And then I can just do some open ended and what what it populates with in the open ended is everybody's statement. Uh, so the design team then can work through that. So I'm just trying not to make this too cumbersome, but at the same time, getting at the essence of what people are trying to say. And I'm hearing you very clearly on there needs to be some differentiation here. So I guess what I'm saying is give me a give me a shot at it. We've got a week or so to be able to get it right. Um, I will get at it first thing tomorrow morning and you'll begin to see uh, some evolving questions that um, will be more tailored to the stakeholder groups uh, that we're talking with. Other thoughts or issues? We did something like this last year where we had to set up surveys ourselves. And I think we remember having a similar issue where certain people wouldn't be able to answer certain questions. Uh, so what we did is we said, if you don't feel you're able to answer this question, then you can skip it. Or you might be able to say on the question, this is this question is aimed at this audience. So I don't know if that's something we might consider for the differentiation yep. piece. Yeah. Um... That'll be a placeholder for me just to remember to go back and do that. It's a good suggestion. Okay. Anything else? Going back to the high school questions. Oh, these were the high school now. So, so I'm going to I'm going to switch the order. I'll do middle school uh, starting on February 3rd, and then I'll do high school uh, starting on February 16th. Anything else pop out at you? And I'm assuming that some of you are in the Google Drive now, so you're actually able to see your own questions. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing here. There we go. Uh, there probably is a way that I can be in a document. Just a sec, Lindsay that I can be in a document and still see you? Is that, uh, is that true? Okay. So rather than share my whole screen, I just need to share part of my screen. All right, Lindsay, go ahead. I was just wondering, I apologize, maybe you mentioned this earlier. How are you wanting the groups to tailor down to the first 10? Like, are you wanting those of us that are in the group to then go and, and kind of move the list around so that the first 10 are the 10 that are the ones, are we supposed to kind of outside of this connect with one another to kind of also figure out like who's going to scribe at the forum? Like, is that kind of the best way to do it? Is just each individually kind of touch base with our um, perspective co-forum folks to kind of finalize that piece of things? Let me answer the, the last question first. Uh, last time in the, in the timeline, we decided uh, who the uh, design team members were going to be within each of the forums. And so, for example, on February 3rd, it's the high school forum and Lisa and Wilder were going to be the 
uh, the design team members that, that uh, were at that forum and that were the scribes. So does that answer your question on that piece, uh, Lindsay? I guess I meant more knowing that should we be kind of communicating because I'm thinking like if like for example Jeff and I are together if we're both trying to type the exact same thing at the same time oh, I got that's it. you know versus should we be coordinating with one another to kind of figure out who might do those things so that we seem a little bit more put together. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, you work it out any way you'd like. Uh, one of my suggestions and I think in one of the correspondence I said take turns. So for example, Lindsay, you might take the first response and then David takes the second and so on and so forth. But also remember what I said, I might be plugging something in and don't worry about spelling or anything, just chunk it in there so we get it. We can clean that up later. That's for our edification and, and use. With regard to selecting your, your top tenors uh, to be able to attend the first, now the middle school forum, uh, Get a distribution across communities. Uh, you know, if it's students, different grade levels, uh, just just the diversity of kind of open mindedness and uh, people that you think are influencers in those communities that would be good to be on those uh, in that in that forum itself. So that would be my my best advice for how to how to select that. And then once you have your top ten. I think the form has, uh, from your long list, you choose your top 10 so that when Tino, whoever else is going to be doing the technology behind it, they know who your, your first 10 are. And also, uh, in, the, in the Barry model, uh, a feedback I got from one of the teachers, it might be good to reach out to your top 10ers and make sure that they actually can attend, uh, for example, on February 3rd, that those high school students don't have a game. Uh, that they're actually able to attend so there's not some back and forth well we only got eight and these two uh, students can't do it and now we're going to replace them it would be good to confirm that before you hand that list over to whoever the invitation uh, technology person is when Jeff, Jeff, <laughs> yep trying to clarify what you said there about the process so do you want us to scribe into the form feedbacks it live in real time? Yes. yes. Uh, how, yeah. What about if we took notes and put it in later? Uh, that's well. Here's here's the issue. I'm going to be moving uh, to uh, some consensus points, and I might need to see that list in order to kind of see what the trend is. So it's better if it can be live, uh, and, and I think that will work fine. Again, these are these are our our info from behind the scenes. So as long as I can read it on the fly, it's going to be okay. And what I'd like you to do is take a long sentence and try to uh, condense it to two or three words. What's the key concept that the person is trying to say here? And I think uh, most of your forums you have two people that are that are working with you, and there should be ad adequate opportunity uh, to be able to do that live. So, when the participants aren't going to be seeing the, no. the sheet that we're putting in. Correct. Information. Okay. Correct. It's only for our eyes. Any other thoughts, issues, or questions? So would it be best to have the same 10 people, especially as students, to be on the, both forums? Like, I kind of feel that might be the case for, I don't know if ever, I bet most people don't have that many more, but I feel like with students, we have like potentially 30 who would do it, but I feel like maybe the same 10 for both groups makes more sense. I don't know, David, how you what you think about that. Just to get some kind of discussion culture going, that way for the mm -hmm. second round, it's not like starting back over again. Kelsey, well, let, me, let me just okay. go ahead and Ann. Well, I was just wondering, are there students from the middle school that some may be more forward thinking already about the high school, so might be thinking in that realm? I wonder if there's a way to kind of divide the kids by which ones are already thinking, oh, someday I want to be in the tech center or this is what I 
are, are already sort of thinking that way or or not i just i just was curious i don't know i think that'd be difficult but you other than unless you just did eighth graders for the high school one and seventh graders for the middle school i think would be the easiest way to get close to that i think that makes sense they might be more open up more being a seventh a group of 10 seventh graders in one form and a group of 10 eighth graders instead of might, I don't know, you probably know better, Kelsey, so I'll follow your lead. I will tell you that from a breadth of thinking and experiences, it would be better if you have long list to have uh, 10 do form series one and a different 10 do form series two for those of you that have long lists because it involves and engages more people. And I, I think that between uh, the advanced work that you do as design team members and the information that I will send to folks uh, before the forum, uh, it'll be a little stodgy as we get into it, but uh, hopefully I can get them warmed up enough and that you can coach them uh, from kind of behind the scenes or beside the scenes to um, have those dialogue starters. and. Don't be bashful about jumping in and saying, well, I'm thinking about this and what do you, what do you students think about that? I'm fine with you uh, saying those kind of things. And the other piece is I'm realizing that in your, your forum role, you're not gonna be really able to contribute your thoughts. And so I'm gonna spend uh, some of our design team meeting time allowing you all to be able to weigh in on these same questions so that we have a dialogue and you're not just a worker bee, you're also a contributor. So I'm gonna build that into our, um, our timeline. Other thoughts or issues? Okay. So I'm looking ahead now, kind of the last thing on our agenda tonight is decide uh, survey communication strategy. How are we going to get this sur this survey out and inform folks that they should uh, they should contribute their feedback to a it's a Google Form survey. It's got some drop down menu items. It's got some open ended. Uh, we'll ask what stakeholder group they're in. How do we get the info out to them? So, so do you want to just get it to the people who were approached already but weren't in the smaller forums? Yes, but I, I'd like it to be, I'd like everybody in, the, in all three communities, four communities, the school right. communities, to be able to participate. So it's not limited to those people that didn't get the forum. It's well, open-ended. So in that case, a week, can email, I mean, the same way we tell everybody it's a snow day or send out information about COVID problems, um, we can email the whole school community by pushing a button. It's, I mean, it's really easy. Okay. It, any of the administrators can do it, they can do it, and Tina can do it also. What about, do you have Front Porch Forum? That's another choice. Because I think the list you have for your school are your, are your internal stakeholders. It's your parents, That's your right. students. So how do we get it more broadly? Uh, how do we get Vermont Technical College? How do we get businesses? How do we, how do we should we put it in the newspaper? How, how do you want people to, to uh, know about it? I would say the newspaper for sure. Front, front porch forum would be good. Although you're gonna get a little overlap with parents. That's okay. Um, and uh, one of the people that I have on my list to contact that I haven't contacted yet is Linda Runyon, who is uh, the Chamber of Commerce person. But she might be able to get it out to a lot of the local business people. She might have a way to do that. Okay. All right. I can so also, Andy, yeah. Go sorry, ahead, Heidi. I can send it through my, my, my rec. I have like a thousand people with accounts in all three different towns. Um, I can send it on an e-blast. Perfect. All right. So as we 
flesh these questions out for the forums, we'll be using uh, quite similar questions in the, in the actual survey. Uh, we'll refine that survey next, uh, next design team meeting, and then we'll, we'll start pumping that out as well. All right. Could we uh, possibly leave links on the school Facebook pages or the OSD, uh, OSSD website as well? Just as another point of access. No, that's, that's the more the merrier. Got it. And this you might have heard me say in our first meeting, three to eight to motivate. In other words, people hear it three to eight times before they actually maybe do something. Go ahead, Ann. I, I was just this. So if we're going to be working on those questions for the for the survey, those will be sort of like the ones that we just saw tonight that are going to be in each feedback forum. But we'll have those like starting, you know, maybe tomorrow afternoon, you'll send those at least no. a start out to us so that we can kind yes. of begin to tweak them and make sure they're answering they're right yeah okay yep that's the plan all right any other thoughts or issues concerns doing okay Bet you didn't think you were going to get into something quite this intense, did you? I appreciate uh, you sticking to it. It's a, it's a big job, but I think it'll be a, a very positive outcome. And it's, uh, it's because of all uh, your experiences that you're sharing and your interest in uh, helping to make the schools the best that they can be. I think that uh, just about a wrap for this evening, I'm just reviewing agenda one more time. Our next meeting is uh, February 1st, 6.30 to 8. I've got notes. I'll, uh, I'll print up the meeting notes that get published uh, because it's uh, of the open meeting law, and I'll send those to you as well uh, through the Google Doc. Um, we're, when, we're moving, I, yeah. I, I've just got one other question. Do, we, do you wanna send out, just so people have sort of a long range view of Sort of the what the strategic plan was the past one because it's also my understanding that we aren't just jettisoning that one completely we're sort of still working on mm -hmm. those things that were put in place to achieve that strategic plan we're just sort of adding a little bit more now that we're kind of moving on that but it might be helpful for people to know what the last strategic plan okay had on it. all right I don't know. I, I'm just wondering. Yeah, I will. Uh, it's on your website, but it's a little hard to find. Uh, so it's under policy. What I'll do is I'll copy that into the Google Doc so you can see what the old one looked like. And uh, and do you think that I also should send out the uh, the indicator document that Lane uh, we discussed with the board back in October? I think it was that talks about the key academic areas and the accomplishments and what's left to do. Should that be part of it as well? Well, what do you folks think? Is that gonna inundate you with too, with too much information? Well, I'll tell you what, I'll make it available to you and you can look at it as you can and as you want to. And that then will becomes your choice. Uh, and again, the, the new strategic plan could look quite similar to that, or it could look really different depending on what our feedback is from stakeholders and the direction that uh, the design team uh, moves forward with. Okay. Indicators. All right, I think uh, I'm good on my end tonight. Anything else, uh, any last words that any of you would like to like to share before we sign off tonight? It's quite a, uh, it was quite a whirlwind tonight. I'm sorry that I didn't send you out those questions in advance, but you, uh, you, uh, you behaved yourself quite well and uh, we moved through them. And so I'll refine that and get it to you tomorrow. And with that, uh, 
Have a great night. Stay warm and see you soon. Bye now.